Hi, this is Everett, Everett Swarkovers. Welcome to my classroom. Uh, today I'm broadcasting from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, live, and I'm sending my message out to uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and a couple others out there. And uh, uh, Gloria, my wife's in the studio. Hi, everybody. And she'll be monitoring the broadcast and uh, checking on the chat room. And I have the chat room going on pretty soon. Uh, today is going to be, I'm really excited about today. Uh, as usual, this is really important. It's an art, art discussion and also art demonstration. Uh, one of the things about art that I've learned over, over the years is that drawing is very important. It's probably the most uh, prerequisite skill in order to improve uh, your art exercises. So you need to take the opportunity to draw as often as you can and draw all kinds of things. Now today we're going to do some drawing. Uh, I'm going to do a, a color pencil exercise, and I'm going to show you several ways of how I do that, and a lot of examples that I use using color pencils. And I'm going to make a small painting out of color pencils. I think you'll enjoy seeing that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you over my my uh, painting board. I'm going to show you uh, some of the material I use, and then I'm going to show you some examples I have, and go through some of the techniques, and then we'll get into the exercise of actually drawing. Now, in the in the uh, description below of this video, uh, I have a downloadable link to my website, and that will take you to uh, a, a photograph of what I'm going to be using today, Crepe Myrtle, and it'll also have a, uh, a drawing that I also sketched out. So you get, a, you get a photograph and you get a sketch, and you can download those on your computer and print them out on your printer and have those as your re reference. And I recommend you take those and uh, draw them up and uh, do some do some color exercise with the color pencils or with paintbrushes. And uh, you can post them on, uh, on my uh, Facebook page. And you go to uh, Facebook and go to Everest Watercolors Art Group on Facebook. And uh, you can sign into that group and then you can post your results. And I'd love to see what you do uh, on, based on the drawing exercises today. So download that, download that link, download, uh, download that photograph, and uh, post it on my uh, Facebook page. I'd like to see what you do. I take it to my paint table and go over some of the equipment I'm using today and uh, a, lot of, a lot of information about colored pencils. Let me just give you my overview here. Uh, really, the, the main, the main uh, character today, the main actor today, is Holbein colored pencils. And I'm going to be using the 24 set, the 24 color set, and I'll show you that in a minute. But we also have on my website, we have, we have 150 open stock. There are 150 different colors of, of colored pencils. And I'm also going to be using a Melts blender today. It's a blender from a Holbein, uh, which will uh, blend the uh, colored pencil and make it look almost like a watercolor. And we're going to be using that today. Some of the paper I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using three kinds today. A Strathmore paper, I'm going to use a sketch pad from Strathmore. A Bristol pad, I'll show you some examples of using a Bristol paper, and also the watercolor pad from uh, Strathmore. Now, all these, all these items I'll be briefing you today on are available at my website, everestwatercolors.com. Okay, now, let me, uh, let me show you. This, this, uh, this is the package that the 24 set comes in, 24 set. This is the whole buying artist colored pack. And it comes in a nice, beautiful tin box with 24 beautiful colors. And the colors you'll see, look, here's the colors you'll see here. They are beautiful. And the colors I'll be using today, right off the bat, I'm going to be using, uh, I'll be using the uh, scarlet, scarlet red, the orange, canary yellow, apple green, fresh green, viridian, holly green, and forest green. I'm using all the greens and yellows. Uh, I'll be using the aqua, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, Prussian blue. I'll be using that. Magenta, the violet, uh, the burnt sienna, yellow ochre, burnt umber. And I'll even be using the, the cool gray and I'll use the, using the black and the white. So I'll be using all 24 colors today uh, on my uh, demonstration. Isn't that exciting? You're going to be able to see the set in action. Now what I have over on my drawing board, uh, let me show you some of the material I'll be using. Uh, this pamphlet here, which uh, is available, this shows all the 20, it shows 150 colors 
There's 150 colors right there. And uh, the Holbein Artist Work, uh, work uh, excuse me, Holbein Artist Color Pencils uh, are oil-based core. Uh, and the, the color of the pencil itself, actually this orange, for example, is the color of the actual pigment. So you get the color of the, of the pencil, and that's the color of the pigment. That's a good way to keep track of your colors. Put that away. Now the whole buying milk comes in a little comes in a little two ounce bottle, and I also use it with a little just a little plastic tray and a, a paintbrush. So you'll see me using that today. Uh, you can also apply the melts with uh, the tortillas, tortillas, just a little paper wrap that you can use that also. And also uh, you can use uh, cotton swabs. Uh, on the sharpeners, I have several kinds. This sharpener here has a little case with it where, where I can sharpen and also uh, keep the, uh, the sediment from the uh, pencil itself inside the box. It's a nice handy one. Or if you have just a simple little Fattler uh, uh, sharpener, that's also usable. Now the, the creme de la creme, the one I really love here is this Orbit. This is a this is a battery operated uh, pencil sharpener. Actually, I borrowed this from my wife Gloria. It's, yeah, she uses it down in her her stamping uh, workshop, and I and I'm going to I borrowed it to to sharpen up my pencil. It really works fine. So uh, it's called Orbit O R B I T, and what you can do is go online and just uh, just locate orbit.com and you'll be able to find it. Let's see, this away. Uh, also be used in some scotch tape today. You'll see that for a reason. And uh, these pencil extender, this is very important. This is a pencil extender. For example, some of my pencils are getting a little short. And uh, what I can do, once this gets down short enough, I can put the pencil extender on it and uh, be able to hold it until it get all the way down to the end of the point. So a pencil extender is a, a nice valuable thing to have in your pencil in your pencil kit. I uh, also have a eraser I'll be using today. This is the uh, Factis, F-A-C-T-I-S. It's, it's a uh, synthetic, uh, extra soft eraser. It's a vinyl eraser, white vinyl eraser, which, which will take off the uh, colored pencils. Also, sometimes I use the... Uh, my uh, pa battery powered one here, and I also I'll be using that a little bit today too. Another tool I'll be using a little bit uh, for some impressing is um, I'm using an old boy, an old boy, an old ballpoint pencil or pen, and uh, the ink's all dried out of it, but it makes a nice way to uh, to mark out uh, scratching. I'll share that on one of my techniques today. Yeah, this is the stylus, and there's several sizes of it. But I use that also, and also in replace for the. Uh, the ballpoint pen. Uh, so the first thing I want to first thing I'm move aside here. I mean, my I've taken the 24 uh, pen pencils and put it into my own uh, my own handy uh, pencil holder. So I have all 24 pencils in here, including a couple extra from the pastel, some of the pastel pencils here, uh, the green and the, the pink and the purple, which are in the basic or in the 24 set, are also in the pastel. This is also a separate pastel 12 set right here. Beautiful colors. So I, I'll be using I'll be using my uh, my setup here. Well, the first thing I want to show you is uh, this is the uh, Strathmore sketch pad. It's uh, it's it's uh, sixty pound sketch paper is what it is. It comes in a hundred sheets and it's a Strathmore sketch pad. Okay, that's available on my website. What I'm going to do is take that sketch pad. I have one here already open, and I'm going to take some colors. I'm going to go through some techniques here. This take this happens to be uh, the green. Uh, uh, this is a holly green. I'm going to be using that today in the painting. And what I do is I hold it. When I hold it, uh, I use a vertical stroke, and I find that to be very reliable as far as getting a nice even, nice even layer of color. I'll pick up another color. Let's say I'll pick up the yellow and overlap that a little bit. And you can see the colors will blend. They blend very nicely. But I'm just I'm showing you the strokes. 
I use a vertical stroke in most all my almost all my drawings. Now you can also use a side stroke, which is uh, on the side of the brush or on the side of the pencil. Because when I when I'm drawing, I'm also painting. I use I use this is almost like a brush stroke. I use the side of the of the pencil, and that can that's also a way of, of putting the, uh, the pigment on the paper. I'll pick up some blue. This happens to be uh, cobalt blue. And the Holbein, the Holbein watercolor pencils are very comparable with the watercolor paints. In fact, the pigment is the same. This color here, this cobalt blue, is the same color that's in the watercolor. So I, I can use it on my watercolors also. And I'll show you that. In a, I'll show you that in a little while. I've got a, a watercolor I'll show you that I, I use that I use colored pencils with. Okay, let me take one more color. Let's take uh, this here is uh, carmine. Carmine is red. That's in the it's in the 24 set. Do a little over, do a little overlapping there. Using a vertical, using a vertical stroke, up and down, and you can see that you get a much a nice easier uh, separation there. Now what I what I'd like to show you here right now is look at the blending. The blending capability here of this of this pencils it's a nice smooth quality of blending uh, the red and the blue come together and makes the uh, makes the purple uh, the uh, the blue and the yellow makes the green and here the yellow and the green makes another green okay so you can do all kinds of making combinations of all kinds of colors and I'd love to I love to mix them up a little bit all the time. In fact, I'll put a little bit of that. I'll use a little bit of stroke over here and put a little color up here. And also uh, use the, well, I got the red one here available. Go ahead and put the red in. Overlap the blue and overlap the, the yellow. So every time, every time you mix the colors together, you're going to get another combination. Now the, this this here this is a uh, Prismacolor uh, blender pencil, and you can use that to blend. And what that does, uh, what we're doing now is, you, as you apply pressure on the on the color pencil, you're you're pushing it into the paper texture. The paper has little little uh, texture to it, has a has a tooth to it, and the, and this this blender pencil. By pressing, I'm pressing down about medium pressure. I'm not pressing very hard, but I'm pressing down enough to mix the colors and also to put the colors into the paper. So I'm pressing the paper, uh, the pigment, right into the the grooves of the paper. So that that is one way. If you have a blender pencil, that is one way to uh, blend the colors together. And also to to, uh, to darken the color itself. So let me show you a little bit of this magic here with the blender. The uh, this this is the melts. It's a water soluble. It's water uh, water soluble. You can actually uh, add water to it and, and uh, dilute it down a little bit. What I do is I take the, take the brush, and I'm going to take a little bit here. Just load your brush. I'll take a little excess off of this, and I'm going to go in and just uh, just move this around on this area I did. Especially up here where I put the three together, and you can see how that color is going to mix together. And the blender, what it does, it liquefies that pigment. So that uh, so what the what the uh, what the melts does it takes it takes the pencil mark and actually blends it together into a, into a, it, I guess it adds the uh, pigment to the to the liquid and then it dissolves it and actually comes down to a nice smooth and I'll be using that a little bit more in my painting today. Now I'm going to take a little darker color here. Uh, let me show you one other thing that's what I think is impressive. I'll take the uh, 
take a lighter color. Let's say this is, I think it's a canary yellow. Yeah, this is canary yellow, which is in the, in the 24 set. Nice, beautiful color. Nice and bright. Makes for, uh, you know, flowers like dandelions and colors like that. Now I'm going to put, now I'm going to mark over that with, uh, now before I go any further, what I'm going to do is take this, I'm going to take this pen and I'm going to put, uh, let's say I wanted to sign my, my painting. So I'm going to put my name in here. So really what I'm doing is I'm, uh, I'm impressing, I'm impressing the character here. And today is uh, 5, 26, 22. Okay. So what I can do now is take a darker color. Uh, let me choose another color besides the uh, cobalt. Let's go get the Prussian blue. The Prussian blue is also in the 24 set. This is Prussian blue. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll mark this color over top of this. And you can see you can see the impression I did below with the other color. And I can I can mix it in where I put this is the this is forest green. I'm gonna use that again today. I put a little bit of green dark green in there. So I can mix more colors on top of this, make it darker. As you add more dark colors, uh, the colors get darker. And I'd rather not use black. I use all the colors except I use black only in special areas where I want to high, uh, darken something really darker with you but I use I just use other colors to darken the, the color up so what I did there was I, I first of all I colored in with uh, the canary yellow and then I went over with a darker color blue and you can see the impression I get there uh, you can see the impression I get there with the, the color pencil so the impression is uh, something you can do. I'll use that little bit of technique today when I do that. Now another another question would be, let me let me go ahead and expand this uh, color out here. This is Prussian blue. Let me put some dark color out here. I'll put some Prussian blue. I'm using a side stroke here to, to put it down. Uh, let's put a little bit of green in there. Put this, this forest green on top of that. I want to get a nice dark mixture over here. And then I'll pick up the, uh, uh, this is the purple color. This is a, that's Prussian blue. Let's go get a purple. So I'll go over here to my uh, basic set, which has, uh, this has violet. This is also in the uh, 24 set. This is violet. So I'll put a little violet in here. So I get a nice dark color. And uh, as long as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead, uh, I'll go ahead and put the, uh, Put the black in. This is black. This is also in the 24 set. So this really this will really get it dark. Okay. So you see there I've got a dark mixture now, a dark color. Now if I wanted to lift some of that out, I use the tape. This is an ordinary uh invisible scotch tape. And I'll put a piece of this across here. And I just press press down on it with my finger a little bit. And I lift that off, and you can see you can see the color getting lighter on that. So it is a way of lifting. You can also use the masking tape. Get a little piece of masking tape. And we can put that across here. Press it down a little bit and lift it up. And you can see the colors there coming down. You can see the color coming down. Okay, so you can lift off some of the color. Okay. But you can also use the vinyl eraser. And the vinyl eraser will go in. You can use the vinyl eraser to go in and do uh do some lifting also with a vinyl eraser. 
and if you have one of these, if you have one of these uh, battery operated ones, now I'm using the ink, the ink eraser, and I'm using the ink eraser in here. In the it comes with two types. You get the regular vinyl eraser, white, and then there's a dark uh, ink eraser that comes with it also. And I can go in here with this. And you can see there, uh, I erased that out with the electric eraser, okay? So that's a, that's a couple ways of lifting that you can do. Now, there's one other take I want to show you here. Uh, if I take, let's take some orange. Just take, this is, uh, this is orange. It comes in the, comes in the uh, 24 set. Let's take some orange. And I want to mix that with a little bit of, uh, let's say, take the scarlet red. That was a cat, it's carmine. Okay, now that does that does a pretty good job of blending just the two the two together, uh, the orange orange and the red. But if I take now this, this technique is called burnishing. If I take the white pencil, which comes in the 24 set, and I use the uh, I use the white pencil, press down, I press down on it. The intensity of the color gets a little bit gets a little bit uh, duller because of the white. But what I'm doing is I'm actually I'm actually pressing that pigment into the paper even more. And then when I go back, after I've, after I've done that, I can go back and put in another layer of the carmine. And then you can see the colors now become even brighter. So that... That brightens the color up even more. I did the uh, I did the yellow, the orange one in the carmine red, and I burnished it with the the white pencil, and then I put another layer of red, red on top of that. You can see how bright the colors come out. So that's another technique, and you can do uh, multiple layers of colors on top, uh, and come up with all kinds of combinations. Okay, those are the basic techniques along with the with the sketch pad. All right, let me go to some. Let me go to another. Let me go to another. Uh, Paper, not a paper type. Ooh, I need to pull that up. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna move this aside. Okay, now the next kind of paper uh, I'm going to show is the Bristol paper, and this is a Strathmore product. Uh, it's a uh, it's a two ply Bristol. It's a nine by twelve sheet, and it's excellent for uh, pencils and charcoal and pastels. Uh, you can even use light washes on it. So it's got a nice smooth surface to it. Uh, which is nice to use with a pencil. So this is called Bristol, Strathmore Bristol, and it, it's available on my website also. I use it. I use these pads quite a bit on drawing. And what I did here is I I did a couple drawings here on Bristol, and you can see right away uh, uh, the paper is smooth. So the pencil is going to look a little bit different than it is on on tracing paper or on uh, sketch paper. But I can go in now with a technique like this, and I can go in and put in. A, let's say I want to take a. Let's say I want to add in more green. Let's say I want to this blue here. I want now. I can go in and layer. I can put another color in here and darken this up a little bit. It's a very smooth paper. Uh, it, it works excellent. It's nice for smoothing out paper uh, or pencil lines. Here I'm using the tip of the, I'm using the point of the pencil to come close to that edge for definition. And I can go in here with, with the tip of the pencil for detail. Stay on these windows, these window shutters. And if I want to go in and darken up the the trees, 
so I can layer I can layer on top of other colors I've already done not no problem at all and make it much darker now here in the foreground let's say I want to get another green let's get a uh, this is Viridian this is a nice this is a nice color this is also in the 24 set this is Viridian green let's say down here in the foreground I want to put a little more green down here so I'm just I'm using a side stroke of the pencil okay all right now now what I want to do now let's take uh, I'll take some of this melts now just take a little bit it doesn't take much a couple drops is all I took out of there make sure to pet, make it a damp brush then I can go back in now and I can Blend that color right in on top of what I just did. And you can see that you can see the paint moving. You can I mean a pencil moving. Especially down here in the grass. I put a lot down in the grass. So we'll get on here, I'll put this in. So this melts this melts uh, blender works on all kinds of surfaces and this happens to be another paint another pe paper surface but it's a smoother smoother surface very easy to paint on very easy to paint on so i just blended now on this uh what i think of bristol and you can see the, the nice texture nice smooth texture you get on that and that's another blending technique again we're using the melts uh with a paintbrush on top of another color. Here I showed a little bit of layering exercise. I took a layer and added some more green on top of that and then and then blended it with the uh, the melt blender. Okay so that's the second paper I've used before. Now the third one is, is the watercolor paper. Uh, this is a Strathmore watercolor paper cold pressed. It's 140 pound. It comes in a pad uh, 9 by 12 and uh, this is also available on my website. It's a watercolor cold press paper by Strathmore. It comes in nine by 12 inch sheets in a pad. 140 pound comes in 12 sheets in a pad. Very nice, nice paper to work on. And here I did a little, I did a little sketch on this one. I'm, I used a sheet of that uh, 140 pound. Now you'll notice now there's a lot of tooth. You can see a lot of white showing. That's the tooth of the watercolor paper. Okay, it's not as smooth as a sketch pad. Or it's not as smooth as the Bristol. It's got a lot of tooth to it. So that's why uh, it takes, when you put watercolor paint on it, it goes into the grooves. Okay. So here I put in some, some uh, pencil. And I can layer as many times as I want to to get it darker or light, uh, add more color to it and so forth. Now up here, you can see I use the I use the melts blender here to, to blend some of the colors together. And you can see that what that does, it it cover it covers in the white areas. It covers in the white areas. I can show that real quickly here. <clears throat> take the take the same uh, brush load. I'll go down here in the foreground now, and you can see here as, as I go across there. What it's doing now, it's it's cover it's filling in, they're covering up all those white, all that white paper now. All that white paper is being covered. So you can see now with the melt with the melts blender now, I'm getting the effect of actually watercolor. It's got the, the color from the color pencil, and then with the melt with the blender, I'm getting the same effect as I would with a color with watercolor. And I could color watercolor over top of this if I wanted to. Okay, so that's another technique using a watercolor paper. Okay, and the difference here is there's a lot of tooth, a lot of texture in the paper, so you have to cover it very well. And you could you could go in and put more layers, and you can put more layers and more color. And eventually you'll eliminate some of that white paper. And we can use the uh, Oh, this is the this is the uh, blending 
blending pencil. And if I wanted to, I could also use the white pencil. I could burnish. I could burnish it with a white pencil. Then go back in over it with, uh, with more color. So that'd be a, that would be another way to uh, color in the water, watercolor paper. Many times you go, there's about three layers now of, of pencil. Then I burnished it with a white pencil. And then uh, I could put more color on top of that. So that's another way of using uh, the watercolor paper with a color pencil. Okay. All right, what I wanted to show you was, uh, here's, I got an example here of a watercolor that I did. This is an actual watercolor. This is this is water. This is my watercolor sketch pad I take out on location. Okay, it's 140 pound watercolor paper. And what I did, I, I did a I did a painting. This is a this is a, a local shopping center, and I took a shot. I took a picture of this building, and then I went I went to my Photoshop and I actually blew it up. And I what I did was I isolated the area. That I was inter I was interested in shadow patterns here. And also gridded it out on face on the uh, Photoshop. I did a grid so I could turn it. I could draw it into the onto the pencil or onto the paper. So what I did then was uh, I transferred that drawing here. With now I use also another tool I use. I use a lot. This is the see-through ruler. It's a 12-inch ruler, but I it's got the grid on it, and you can see it. You can see the the fine marks. Let me get up here with the paper. You can see the grid. I can see through it, but I also I can see the inch, the inches, the, all the way down to the sixteenths. Uh, so what I did now is I can use that to draw the size I want, uh, or I draw in the shape and the, and the size I want, uh, this uh, particular uh, scale that I want to use on the drawing. So I use this see-through ruler a lot. This is also on my website. Okay, so what I did was I took this uh, drawing. And I did this. I did this on location. And I actually, I actually took a, uh, I actually took a, a short movie of this, but it didn't work. It didn't. The movie camera wasn't wasn't working right for me. So uh, I just went ahead and did the sketch. So I did the sketch. But what I want to show you here is I can take the pencils now. Let's take some of, this, and I can go in and do some fine tuning. So I can go in here now. Let's say here, I want to. Uh, looking at my photograph reference. I want to go in and I want to fine tune this edge right here. I want to fine tune the second. So I can just go in with, a, with the color pencil and I can go in and do detail now on this particular painting. That little corner up, that little corner up here is the red. I just fill it in with a with a color pencil. Also, let's say I take uh, take my yellow ochre. This is my yellow ochre, which is also in the 24 set. And this this part here. Which has got it's in shadow, but it's got like a yellow. I can put that in with the, the color pencil. And finally, there's this nice shadow pattern. I love the shadow pattern. This is why I really took this Photoshop. I took the uh, I took this shadow pattern here from the, the light was coming across and cast a shadow on this corner here. That's what I was really trying to capture. What I can do now is take the. Let's try. Let's start with the. Uh, we'll start with a cool gray, cool gray pencil. And I can mark out that. So I'm using the I'm using the po the color pencil of the color I want to use. Okay, and I'm matching that up with the color that's on the, the actual picture. So I'm going ahead and I'm and I'm coloring in with the pencil that shadow pattern that I see on that building. All right, so those three areas I worked on. I worked on this little red section here. I cleaned it up, cleaned up the edges. I added a little bit of color here across the top here with the yellow ochre, and then I, then I went ahead and added the shadow pattern off of this building that was that was uh, that I caught in the photograph. And I thought that that was the most interesting part of this whole 
of this whole exercise was to get this corner right here. That was my impact area right in this area here. And there's other things I could fine tune. I could take the I could take the black pencil and I could fine tune some of the shadow patterns. So there's lots of little touches I can do with the uh, colored pencil. And also some of the, uh, you can see the arches in here, the archway, there's arch, arch windows in the shadow. What I can do now, like, like I, with a pencil, I can go in and darken up some of those. So I can, I can add color on top of watercolor and I can go back and put watercolor on top of colored pencil. So it works both ways. I've used, I've used it both ways. I've put color pencil on top of watercolor, and I've put watercolor, I've put the color pencil on top of watercolor, and also watercolor on top of color pencil. So it, it works both ways. So I can go in and darken up any area that I want to uh, with a color pencil. So I can edit a painting if I wanted to, just little places, and I've done that before. I've edited a watercolor painting with the, the color pencil. Let me put that aside. Okay, now we're going to get into a drawing exercise. Okay, let me bring this over. Now, this is where this is really the part that really looking really looking forward to this. Uh, I took a picture of this uh, myrtle crepe, crepe myrtle uh, tree down on the waterway, and I thought really interesting shapes. And uh, it would it'd be an easy drawing to do, but a little bit of good exercise in drawing, a good exercise in using the color pencil. So that's the photograph that I used. And uh, the size happens to be, if you measure it, it happens to be uh, five by seven. How interesting. That's just the size I wanted. So I, I took this five by seven. Actually, what I did, the photograph that you you take off the uh, website, uh, you, can, you can scale it down to five by seven if you wanted to, five by seven. And here's also a close-up of that uh, of the tree structure. I thought that'd be interesting. There's, there's close -up. And the shadow pattern on the on the uh, on the trunks and so forth. Okay. What I did was I, I gridded this I gridded this on Photoshop, and then I took a, I made a printout of, on a five by seven sheet. Now this <clears throat> this helped me draw this on a piece of paper by gridding this out on a piece of paper. I'm able to transfer this to a, a sketch very easily. And if you wanted to, uh, instead of doing this on uh, Photoshop, you could just draw it. What I did was I took another one. This is an eight by 10 size, print out on the, uh, on the Facebook, on the <clears throat> on my homepage, my uh, Everest Watercolor page, my Facebook or my uh, website. Download that photograph on an eight by 10, eight by 10 sheet of paper, and here, there's the thirds. The thirds are marked off. Thirds down here, and a third. Uh, this turns out to be a nine by. Uh, let's see, nine by seven. Yeah, seven by nine is a size, and you can divide it in thirds. Uh, this is really a two and a third per section down here, and this is really a three inch section up here. And then I drew in white pencil here to show the show the grid lines across the dark areas. So there's a couple of things you can do. But then I, I went ahead and I transferred this uh, five by seven. This is a five by seven drawing, five inches wide and seven inches high. Okay. Then I, I put in the put in the thirds. So I have a grid here of exactly of the grid that I put on the on the drawing that I showed you. So the photograph the photograph has a the photograph has a grid. And my drawing has a grid, and they all both match. And I transferred this over to a piece of sketch paper, and then I used uh, I used my ink pens here to. Uh, I wanted to show you the sketch, so I put ink pens on it so you could see it better. And this is the sketch that's on my website that can be downloaded. So you can download you can download the photograph, and you can download the sketch, and print them both off to help you. Uh, to help you uh, uh, copy this onto your sheet of watercolor paper or a sheet of uh, color paper. So you can put it on drawing paper or on, here I've transferred it to a sheet of watercolor paper. 
Now this is 140 pound Gemini watercolor paper. And the first thing I'm going to do, I've drawn, I've drawn the sketch on there very lightly. That's, that's the key here. You draw it on with a pencil very lightly for outlines. I'm going to take the uh, first color I'm going to use is the yellow ochre. And I'm going to put that on the, I'm going to color in the trunks. I start, I start with the yellow ochre. Chunk over here some more. And I can use the photograph here as a reference. Uh, so I usually I use the yellow ochre on this section here to get the nice light color. And then on the uh, on the shadow side, I used uh, uh, I used the burnt umber as a shadow. So now I'm drawing it. I'm drawing in the shadow pattern. And there's a little. This is darker along here. So I'm just kind of looking at the photograph and kind of using it as a as a guide. A little bit of shadow over here on this side. And most part of this one here is also in shadow. Most of this is in shadow. Okay, now I'm going to add in some limbs. I've got. Uh, I'm using the. I'm using the uh, burn umber, and I'm going to add in some of these darker limbs. And there's a lot of limbs up there, but pick the ones you think are going to show up. And you want to leave some sky holes in here too. You don't want to. We don't want to cover up all the uh, the areas that are got sky showing through. So we're going to also put in some limbs here. This one here has some a lot of limbs on this one. This has a lot of a lot of leaves. This one has more limbs. We're going to put in some. Go back to that yellow ochre one again. We're trading off to uh, trading off pencils. It's just like trading on paintbrushes in a, when you're doing a painting. Okay. Then the next thing I want to put in, um, I'm going to put in the background. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a dark background. The, dark, the trees back here are very dark, so I'm going to use a dark background. And I'm going to use that vertical stroke. So I'm going to use dark, a dark value which here is suppression blue and I'm going to use the vertical stroke here I'm going to I've got the uh, I've got the light sketch here I know where the trees are so I'm just going ahead and follow those in this helps me uh, by starting at the top I know where the top of the uh, The background trees are, and I just come down to basically the that's almost a horizon line, almost a horizon line. That's close enough. We we'll start at the top of the tree line and come down. So basically, I'm putting a, a uh, I'm putting a base coat in here. Now I'm going to follow that with. Uh, Dark green. Now this is the forest green, which is the darkest green in my palette. Okay, and I'm going to put that over top of the Prussian blue, and I'm going to start at the bottom and go up. That will mix those two colors and also give me a lighter value at the top, because the sun is also coming in across those trees, and the top of those trees will be a little bit lighter. So I'm accounting for that by putting the darker values. At the bottom, along where the trunks are, at the base of the trees, and leaving the leaving the colors at the top of the tree a little bit lighter with just one layer. And this way I'm also blending when I put these two colors together, I'm blending the blue in with the green in with the green.
Uh, now, next thing I want to do is add in the uh, add in the, the trees. So I'm going to use uh, a couple greens. This one here is uh, holly green. Holly green. I'm going to put that into the uh, the the tree is going to have several colors of green. But I'm going to start with the holly. I'm going to use a little bit of side stroke here. And I'm going to leave uh, going to leave some areas that I can put in some sky holes. So I'm going to leave some areas open. And I'm, fo I'm following basically the outline of the of the the tree line up here. So I have, I'm using the photograph a little bit as a reference here, just to give me an idea of the shapes and so forth. So I'm kind of following the the outline of the of the uh, of the branches now this one tree on the right this one area over here overlaps this other one so it really is a it's an really interesting little up a little bit just put a little more a little more branches in here more leaves I said branches I'm not leaves okay then I'm going to switch to a lighter color this will be uh, this is apple green we're at our spring green. Yeah, this is spring green. I'm gonna put a little bit of lighter, a little up here at the top where the sun is hitting the top of the tree. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, light, lighter green color. So I'm kind of blending that in now. I'm, I'm mixing the colors together a little bit, and that'll blend it in when I put the blending, the melt blender on. And these, these up here now, these are much lighter. These are all in. This part of the tree, this part of the tree had they were all in the sunlight, so they're going to be a much lighter, much lighter over here. Now while I've got the green in my hand here, I'm also going to uh, put some some color down here on the on the ground, so I can use the use the green color down here. I'm using a I'm using a little side this what I call a side stroke. Uh, it covers a lot faster that way. I'll pick up some of that dark green now in the foreground. Uh, there's a shadow pattern across here. I'll pick up with a darker green. Okay, now there's one, I'm going to use one pastel color, which I really like. Yeah, this pastel color is called uh, Sky Blue. Sky Blue is a pastel color. It, it matches the blue of the sky up here. That and a little bit of cobalt maybe, but start out with the sky. This will be the lighter color, which I'll start down here at the horizon area. Just above the treetops, so I'll put it in here. Yeah, put a little bit here, a little bit here in the inside the tree to show a little bit of sky hole. So I'm covering this in pretty fast, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to demonstrate how I'll put that together. Now, now I'm up a little bit higher, so I'm going to move into the cobalt blue, uh, which is a darker blue. In fact, uh, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to use cerulean. Uh, this is a cerulean. It's, I don't cobalt blue is a little bit too dark up here, so I, I changed my mind and made it to a. I'm using cerulean blue, which is the same colors I used in my palette in my watercolor palette. Okay, and the last the last part I want to mix in is I'm going to use a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, same color I have in my palette. Now I'm going to put this little 
road. This is really a roadway, but it's really a pathway. I'm going to make this into a pathway. So I'm going to put the pathway here using a little bit of a, a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm going to, to, to differentiate that from the trees, though, I'm going to make, I'm going to put a little bit of, a, a little bit of um, burnt umber with that. A little mixture of burnt umber. And also, while I'm here, I may pick up a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. It'll give me a nice dirt mix. Okay, now, the last step that I do is uh, get the melts out. So I, I, I've covered all the paper in with the colored pencil. And I put a, I put three or four drops here on the my little pad. And I pick up my, my paintbrush. I'm getting a glare from that. I'm getting a glare from that uh, light up there. Well, sorry about that. Let's cover up the shiny spots. So I'll start with the I'll start with a tree. I just I put in the yellow I put in the yellow ochre here. So I cover in the yellow ochre with a little bit of shadow behind that. It goes in the shadow as I go up into the branches. And so I'm, I'm starting with the I'm starting with the uh, trunks, which is where I started with the pencil. I'm starting the blending here. So I'm blending those colors together now with the uh, the melts. This is almost like painting with watercolor because it, it blends the colors together just like watercolor. And let me get a little bit of the, the greenery up here. Look at that color. Look at that color go together. I just look at that. Look at that. See it happening? I mean, the color is just blending together. I got that light yellow in there mixing with that green. I'm getting all kinds of different colors now. So th this is just like painting with uh, watercolor. It just... Uh, this melts, just takes that watercolor pencil, and blends that color in. And I can go back in and add more color on top of this. Uh, I can even use watercolor. This is watercolor paper. I can go back in and put watercolor paper, uh, watercolor paints on top of this. So this gives me a little more variety of techniques and a variety of applications. Here I'm working a little bit on the edges because there's these are leaves, so I'll make them look like leaves. You get them a little sharp edges a little bit here. Now the last part up here will be, uh, I got this lighter green up here at the top. And then I can do that uh, the dark background, which uh, goes behind the tree. That sets off that tree very nicely. So I'll put that in real quickly. You can see the melts really putting that those colors together very nicely, blending them. I'll put a little bit more over here. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna finish this completely. I'm just showing. I'm going through the techniques. I'm just showing the application here, so you get an appreciation for uh, not only the pen, colored pencils, but also this melts blender. And I'll put the pathway in. That's with that. Uh, Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a little bit of uh, burn umber. Gives me a little little road, a little road mix of dirt, maybe. Could be a, a little dirt road, dirt path. And then here in the foreground is uh, you got the green. This is what I love to do right here. Now I mix them together. I got the dark green in the front. Look at that. You can see the mixtures now of the, of the dark green now going in with the light green. That grass. And I can go back in and put texture in on top of this. Just want to finish off enough of this here so you can appreciate for what's going on. And now, not to forget the sky, just to show you a little bit of the sky. I uh, did a little bit here around the tree and some of these sky holes mixing in the mixing in some of that, uh, that pastel 
colors, which was uh, this was the uh, sky blue, it was a sky blue pencil. And up here at the top was the uh, cerulean. So this gives you an idea of the color mixes. Okay. Now, what, <clears throat> that's that's the way, it, of course, it can be worked on. This takes a while to finish off, but you can see now the colors and the textures and so forth just with a color pencil and using a melts blender. I want to show you why I did one. Uh, I haven't done one like this before, but I'll show you another painting I did. Let me, let me show you. Now, if I mat this now, let me take this off the board. Get that shiny stuff out of the way. If I took a, now, the reason I made this 5x7 is I have an 8x10 mat board. And I can take that 8x10 mat board and I can make a little nice little 8x10 painting with an 8x10 mat. With a, this is a 5x7 painting. On an 8x10 mat board. But let me show you something else I did. Uh, this was just a real quick demo here showing you the color pencils and using the melt blender to blend the colors together and give you almost a, a watercolor look with your color pencils. Now here's one I did uh, earlier, a more completed one. I found this old, I found this uh, old barn, this old deserted barn, okay, or shed. And uh, it's one I've been looking at uh, long for a long time. I took, a, I took a photograph of it. And you can see it's an old, dilapidated, deserted, uh, but a very interesting shapes and so forth. So what I did was I, I drew this up on a sketch pad. And then I went ahead and put it on colored paper. This is watercolor paper. And what I did here, let me, let me show this to you. I'll put the map board around that. Okay, now that's a more completed painting using the color pencil with the melts blender. You can see how the colors mingle together, also how you can keep them separated. This tree up here really turned out, I really like this tree right here. Because the way I, I put in some light and dark color green, and then when I mix it with the blender, blender melts blender, it kind of gave me a, a very green mixture all by itself. And you can see I use different different colors down here on the barn. I use the yeah, I use the burn number, I use the gray, gray number three number here, and I use the violet, then I use the dark Persian blue back here. I used gray on the rooftop. I used all the greens up here. I used the dark greens. I used five different colors of greens with a yellow. Down here I put the burnt sienna along with the umber on the path. So I used all the colors in the 24 and the 24 colors. And I even mapped around the uh, even use black on the corners and on design. Okay, let's go back to, uh, I'll take you back to the main table, the main camera. Well, I was really, I was really, uh, really proud of that the last little painting I did. That, that, I've been watching that I've been looking at that old barn, that old shed for a long time, probably about four or five years. And I've taken several pictures of it and I've drawn it. I've done sketches of it and so forth. But this is the first time I actually did a small painting. And I did it with the color pencils, uh, the 24 set with all the colors on there. I used almost all the colors on there. I did. And then uh, and then I used the, the melts blender to blend, those pen to blend those colors together. And that was on 140 pound Gemini watercolor paper. So it does work and it works well. Uh, so I like that result. So I hope you enjoyed that. I really, I really enjoyed today. Today was a lot of fun. The color pencils are, uh, are really a lot of fun to use. Uh, they're very, they're very easy. They're, they're portable. Just get a couple of color pencils and a piece of paper, and that's all you need. And uh, I really encourage you to download uh, that photograph and uh, that sketch I made for the uh, for the tree for the myrtle tree. I think you'll enjoy doing that. So. Uh, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed that today. Uh, I'd like to have you uh, give me some likes on Facebook and uh, give me a subscribe and give me a, a thumbs up on uh, YouTube.
and all you out there on, on LinkedIn, uh, I appreciate you looking in and uh, give me some thoughts and comments also. So give me your ideas of what you'd like to see on, uh, on this show. Uh, I'll be back again next week on Thursday. So bye, bye for now.